Hello everyone and welcome to my thoughts on Paladin's upcoming Tidal Surge update. I'm a bit pressed for time as I'm in the final stages of my Sims 3 project, so I'm going to try my best, and probably fail, to keep this brief. First up, we have a new game mode coming to the realm, Wave Defense PvE, where the goal is to survive 10 minutes against hordes of AI enemies. The mode has two versions to play, one where you're matched with randoms, and one where you can play with pre-made teams. The latter is going to be especially fun for making challenge runs with your friends. Currently, there are three scenarios. Corrupted Burrow, which takes place on Brightmarsh and has you fighting against Darkness-themed enemies. Forgotten Altar, which is on Primal Court and has you face Pyre-themed foes. And Dark Tides, a reimagining of the original Dark Tides event, where you fight on Marauder's Port against the Abyss. My initial thoughts is that the mode starts out very slow, especially on Forgotten Altar. But then, towards the end, the difficulty spikes up like crazy. I think a more streamlined difficulty curve would be better for the mode. Another critique I have is the bots. As we all know, bots and paladins are very questionable, and the bots in wave defense are no different. On top of cleaning up bot behavior, I think it would be quite interesting if bots using the same champs had varied behavior. For example, I'll use the Corrupted Burrow experience. In that mode, you face Vora bots, Drogos bots, Io bots, and Yagaroth bots. For my version of varied bots, let's have Vora be the generic grunt. Then with Drogos, you could have grounded and airborne units. For Io, there should be a version that summons Luna, and another version that prioritizes healing allies. Then for Yagaroth, you can have worms that constantly move around in rural form, while others fight you in planted form, all culminating to a final boss Yagaroth that will use its ultimate on you. In my opinion, that sounds quite fun to play. I think differing bots is a must for the mode. While wave defense is quite primitive in my eyes, I think it has great potential for the future of Paladins. Continuing on with Trials. Many challenges have been brought down in difficulty. Looking at you, 150k ammo. Thank Genos. Next, we have another recycled event pass. Buried Treasure, which will have 5 skins from the Shore Patrol, Pirate's Treasure, and Dark Depths passes. Yawn. On to LTMs. Our new one is Leon. I Shrunk the Realm! A version of TDM where upon each a limb, your champion shrinks by 10% in size. Each time you shrink, you lose HP, but gain move speed and jump height. This mode sounds very chaotic and silly, I can't wait to try it. Following up, we have new talents and adjustments to some talents for the truly talented LTM. I won't cover everything here, as I'd rather just wait to play the mode again. Also, can I just say, truly talented was one of the best LTMs we've had since pick any. Adding even more variety to champions revitalized Paladins for many players, myself included. Okay, now we get onto balance and the reason for the aggressive title on this video. I'm not trying to start any drama, but that was my first thought when reading these changes. As we go through them, you'll see why. I do want to preface that I did not play any matches of PvP during this PTS, as it died out pretty quickly. So most of my thoughts here are speculative. First up, we got three questionable changes to the item store. Armor plating will now only work when the user is not affected by crowd control. Immediately upon seeing this, my thought process was, why though? Are the devs playing their own game? Surely they must know that 46 out of 59 champs, or that 78% of the roster, has meaningful CC that will bypass armor plating's DR. Not to mention, that usually you're the most vulnerable to damage when under the effects of crowd control. Now CCs like stuns and cripples are going to be that much stronger. You might as well not even bother with this item and just get veteran next patch. Next up is Bloodbath. Now instead of healing you and your assist ally for 300 scaling in a burst, it will heal for 400 scaling health over 4 seconds. I suppose the goal is to alleviate players losing out on their heal due to cauterize from a firefight. The slow heal over time should now give players the option to take cover to gain more HP. However, burst healing is always going to be better than a slow heal over time, so I consider this a nerf. At this point, I'd really like a revert to the old kill to heal that ignored Cauterize. I think that was the best version of this item. 
Last of the questionable changes for the item store, and the worst by far, is the new Rejuvenate. Instead of purchasing this item to receive increased healing from others, you now pick this item to increase your own healing output. Great! Another must-buy for supports. And also an item that has the potential to be quite busted on champions with self-healing. Buck, Rom, and Vora to name a few. The reason for this change is that currently, Rejuvenate negates a portion of anti-healing, which massively bolsters the power of supports. Funny enough, for the longest time, I thought this wasn't the case. In my mind, I thought Rejuvenate was calculated first, and then anti-healing. But no, it's not. I tested it, and Rejuvenate makes you ignore a chunk of anti-healing. In my testing, I used Pit. So for Rejuvenate with a base potion, heals for 1,300. In my mind, I thought Rejuvenate was calculated first, and then anti-healing scaled off of that. So in theory, a 50% anti-healing potion should heal for 650, the 1,300 cut in half. But in practice, the heal from potion at 50% caught is 800. That's because Rejuvenate 3 is removing 30% of the anti-healing from Cauterize, making the potion heal for only 20% less. I do agree with the devs in that ignoring anti-healing is a problem that should be addressed. But rather than go through with this wonky change, I'd rather the dev team try and fix the current Rejuvenate in regards to anti-healing. As per Cryptic on Twitter, the team is taking feedback and is open to reverting this change. So speak up, champions! Now we move on to champion balance. This first set of changes is what gave me the reaction, are they on crack? Cassie. Blast Shot now applies a poison effect that deals 12% of the champ's max health as damage over 3 seconds. And Disengage will now apply a 35% slow for 3 seconds. Really? Raise your hand if you thought Cassie needed a slow and percent base damage. I would also like to point out that this poison buff to Blast Shot is a talent on Vora. So some could argue that Cassie is getting a talent's worth of power added to her base kit. Cassie is one of the most consistent and burstiest champions if played right. Besides her burst combo, she's perfectly fine balance-wise. I wholeheartedly disagree with these changes. Also, I want to point out that if you pick Impulse and do the burst combo, all you need is one follow-up shot to kill standard health champs because of the new poison damage. Next up is Caspian, with another rework to Rogue's Tempo. Now, the ability has a consistent projectile speed of 400 units per second. Also, it now applies a 2 second cripple instead of a 40% slow. This, on top of a cooldown decrease going from 11 to 9 seconds, should make the ability not feel like garbage. Surprisingly, I think the best buff here is to the projectile speed. On live, Rogue's tempo, especially no stacks, can be so tricky to hit. Making it consistent has been an ask since Caspian released. On top of that, changing the slope to a cripple will boost its power dramatically. Now players will be incentivized to use Rogue's Tempo to fumble enemy escapes, rather than just throwing it for a random slow, or to instantly win 1v1s with a stun. I do think a 2 second cripple is a bit long though, I think 1.5 seconds to match Vora would feel more fair. Keep in mind that Caspian will be able to cripple every 9 seconds now with the shorter cooldown. A cooldown that gets even shorter with the new Measured Cadence. Ah, once again, Measured Cadence is in the patch notes. Now, instead of the Rogue's Tempo copy slowing opponents, it will now reduce the cooldown of the base Rogue's Tempo by 15%. I think Measured Cadence is once again going to be the meta talent for Caspian. It's free extra damage, and now it's free cooldown reductions on a cripple. I was really hoping to see a revert to its Got Some Heft to allow for some more talent diversity. Oh yeah, the cooldown on Deadly Momentum is going from 13 to 11 seconds. Very nice. Overall, I am very excited to try Caspian again. He's a character I want to main, but have been struggling to do so. Here's to trying again next patch. Next up are changes that have me excited. Buffs for Corvus. Dark Gifts is up first. The heal from the mark has been up from 75 to 100 per second. The reload speed bonus the mark provides has been up from 15 to 25 per cent. And the big one, the cooldown reductions the mark provides has been up from 15% to 20%. I'm gonna have to redo so many coordinate strats videos because of that last one. While I do love this change for selfish reasons, I don't think this fixes the issue with the talent or Corvus as a whole. 
The problem with Corvus currently is that he struggles to heal groups. The best way to heal with Corvus is to juggle the mark around to take advantage of the bonus healing as well as the vital cooldown reduction on reconstruction. Due to juggling the mark, you don't really get a chance to focus on pocketing a single ally to push their limits. This is one reason that Spreading Influence sees the most play, because you can ensure that one mark stays on your pocket while another is tossed around for healing. Thanks to the cooldown reduction, your team overall will receive more healing than if you were playing without the talent. While the buffs to Dark Gifts further push that pocket play style, I don't see this talent fully taking off. All the enemy has to do is focus the rest of the team, which will result in Corvus having to reallocate his mark off his pocket, or deal with the base reconstruction. Until the cooldown slash healing bonus on marked allies is looked at, I still see spreading influence being the meta pick. I think Dark Gifts will have more potential now, especially on flanker comps, but the team will probably need a second support, since Corvus usually can't keep up by himself. Skipping some of the irrelevant changes to move on to Kasumi. First up, base health is going up from 2100 to 2200. Considering how she still lacks a flanks movement skill, I think more health is a must. Now we got changes to the Yokai doll. The first is that the targeting cone has been made smaller, going from 6 units to 4.5 units. Next, the bonus damage the doll deals to shields is being upped from 200% to 250%. To put it in numbers, the doll will deal 750 damage to shields, as opposed to 600. However, Kasumi can no longer purchase Wrecker. Last up is a buff to the Curse passive. The damage debuff enemies receive is going from 2% to 3% per stack of Curse. Now when capped, enemies will deal 15% less outgoing damage, as opposed to 10%. Okay, so there's a bit to unravel with these yokai doll changes. The damage to shields is fine, Kasumi really shouldn't be tackling shields anyways, but when she does, she'll be a bit better at it. The upping of the Curse Stacks debuff is very nice. At 10%, it felt so measly. Now the effect will be a bit more potent, and help Kasumi in duels. The nerf to the targeting cone on the doll is the only change I dislike here. Kasumi's Yokai doll is already dealing with consistency issues. Many times you will be on target, and still register a miss. Tightening the targeting cone will only make that worse. If this nerf to the targeting cone were to go through, I think the range of Yokai Doll should be reverted to 120 units to compensate. Currently, Kasumi is the only flank who can't do anything outside of her effective range. All other flanks have some form of poke damage. Also, it's not like Kasumi has a movement skill to close the gap. Overall, these changes intend to aid Kasumi in 1v1s and I think they will succeed at that. However, I do hope that Kasumi continues to receive quality of life changes going forward. Up next, we have a slight rework to Kinesa. Let's start with the Carbine Rifle. Damage is going up, but the fire rate is going down. Overall DPS is the same. But her accuracy has been improved, as well as the max effective range being nearly doubled, going from 55 units to 100. And the max damage falloff now starts at 175 units, up from 115. Onto the changes for the sniper mode. The damage per shot is going down from 1200 to 1000. The charge time per attack is going down from 1.5 seconds to 1 second. And now, the field of view in rifle mode is going from 25 to 38, meaning that you can see more of the map now. These changes intend to make Kinesa more consistent across all ranges. Dare I say it, but I actually want to play Kinesa next patch solely due to the increased field of view. Originally, Kinesa had a field of view like this, but the devs zoomed it in for... reasons. That was one of the worst balance changes back in the beta days. The decrease in charge time on the rifle makes the weapon feel more snappy, and the damage nerf is fair. My only nitpick is that the steady aim talent has gone unchanged, meaning that Kinesa can return to her 1200 damage while having a faster charge time. That's gonna be annoying to face. That's not it for Kinesa though. The transporter now travels 30% faster. Good, because that ability is currently trash on live. And the oppressor mine now applies a 15% slow to targets affected. Wow, maybe now the ability will actually feel worthwhile and aid Kinesa in hitting shots. Let's move on to talents. Like I said, steady aim was not touched even though it should be. Reposition now reduces your max teleport range by 25 units. Eh, not too fond on this change. 
but I do know this talent offers much frustration to players, so I suppose it's warranted. Oppression is getting the boot, and is now Octopressor. With this talent, a presser mine can target up to 5 enemies, and you could have up to 3 active at once. They pretty much took the card and made it a talent. Frankly, I did find it odd that Kinesa had a card and a talent that essentially did the same thing. Even though they slow now, I do think Kinesa's mind style is her weakest, and I'm a bit worried about the visual clutter this talent can provide. I really hope they consider toning down the visuals on some of Nessa's skins to accompany this. I personally would just like a talent that allows mind damage to stack. Okay, last for Kinesa is some tweaks to cards. Aftershock, which originally was Octopressor, now makes the slow from Oppressor Mines linger for 0.4 seconds scaling. Interesting card that can further bolster the mind playstyle. Lion Wait. The old card would grant you ammo while standing still. The new card is as follows. After 1 second of standing still, zoom your sniper rifle by 5% scaling. Even though I never plan to use this card, I like the option for players to go back to the old zoom mode if they prefer. 5% scaling is kinda low though. I think investing 5 loadout points to almost get back to the old zoom is absurd. The scaling should be higher so as to use this as a filler card. Beat Me Up is next. The old card had its level 3 version placed in base kit, with Transporter moving faster. The new card reduces your damage taken by 4% scaling while in Transporter. I think this card will be great for when you're dived. Calibrate, which reduces the cooldown of Transporter when hitting Carbine Rifle shots, is having its scaling lowered from 0.15 seconds to 0.12 seconds scaling. Kind of odd since the Carbine Rifle will be firing slower now. Last is Power Supply. The old card reset the cooldown of Transporter upon hitting a health threshold. The new card now grants you 0.4% ultimate charge when you hit a headshot. I think this card has the potential to be busted with good Nessa players, but I also think it's going to be a fun mini game to tie in when you use her tweaked ultimate. Next is Koga with a nerf to Dragon Stance. The move speed bonus you receive during the ability is going from 25% to 15%. Fair in my eyes. Many people have been complaining about Koga. I'm surprised he got off so easy. Next we got Maeve with changes to all of her talents. Let's start with Cat Burglar. The talent is being reverted. The damage bonus is going from 25% to 30%, and the time limit is going from 3 to 5 seconds. Yay, let's just buff Maeve's best talent and bring it back to its prime. I guess the Maeve players cried really hard about this one. Next is Rogue's Gambit. The bonus damage on Pounce has been upped from 15% to 20%. Pounce with the talent will now deal 480 damage, up from 460. This is such a nothing change. If they really wanted to make this talent have an impact, they would up the bonus to 25%. That would make Pounce deal 500 damage, which when comboed with two sets of daggers, would deal 2100 damage. Still, Rogue's Gambit is a fun talent, it's just not as good as Cat Burglar. Next, Street Justice is getting gutted in my eyes. Now instead of allowing Pounce to execute targets at 35% health, it will do the following. Activating Midnight recharges Pounce. During Midnight, Pounce executes targets at 40% health, and Midnight lasts an additional 2 seconds. I get it. The current Street Justice is one of the most polarizing talents to face, and I think a rework or nerf is a good idea for it. However, Ultimate talents in this game are generally not that strong due to only taking effect during your ultimate. Oftentimes, these talents offer a little benefit outside of your ultimate to warrant picking them, usually in the form of a faster charge time so you can use ult more frequently, or bonus health in the form of Makoa. Street Justice offers no benefits outside of the ult. Midnight as is, is one of the weakest ults in the game and arguably the weakest in the flank class due to how easy it is to counter. Upping its time limit will definitely help against certain players, but I still feel this is an overall weak effect. That being said, I think the idea of this talent is cool, Maeve going on the hunt while her enemies are shrouded in darkness. The thing is, you could already do that with the current Street Justice, and why would you pick this over Maeve's other two options? You're really going to pick Street Justice, which only affects your ultimate, over two talents that have near constant uptime. I personally think a simple solution would be to lower the threshold for the execute from 35% to 25%. The talent will still have its strength, but will be a bit weaker overall. 
Next up is the community's favorite change. Makoa's ultimate, Ancient Rage, will now increase his size by 50%. On top of that, Koa now gains 50% headshot damage reduction, and the bonus health the ult provides is going up from 4,000 to 5,500. Now the ult will make Makoa a 10,000 HP raid boss. Despite being the first ultimate you think of when you think Paladins, Ancient Rage has kind of been memed on lately. Hitscans can shred through Koa, and usually the ultimate does little besides buying time. The dev's intention behind the new Ancient Rage is to allow Koa to body block for his teammates, as well as to prop up the power of the Leviathan talent. The opportunity to shred Koa still exists, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't excited for this change. Next up is Moji, who surprisingly is getting very little this update. The old Boom Boom talent is now part of the Jubilation talent, meaning that magic marks will explode in a 15 unit AoE for 75% damage. With the Moji rework, the previous flank Moji mains were upset that she was essentially deleted. The Jubilation talent attempts to bring back flank Moji, but fails. Returning the old Boom Boom talent to Jubilation will make it more potent, but I don't think that will fix the issue with the talent, because frankly, the issue with the talent is the same issue that Flank Moji faced as a whole. I do think the talent would benefit from infinite sparkle capacity, as well as lowering the self slow on sparkle. Next up is Nyx. Royal Presence now displays a duration bar while active. About time. Realm Breaker now can miss twice before resetting the combo chain. Also about time. I always thought it was absurd that other combo characters don't have to worry about missing, while Nyx does. To accompany this, Nyx has some card changes. True Freedom has been reworked. The old card allowed Realm Breaker to miss before resetting its combo. The new one heals you for 75 scaling when landing the final hit on Realm Breaker. Capped out is 375 healing, which is pretty low for a frontline, but this will offer Nyx a bit of self-sustain. Next is a buff to Devastating Blows, which increases the range needed for Realm Breaker's bonus damage. The range is being reverted, going from 4 to 5 unit scaling. Last is a buff to the New Order. This card grants you a personal shield when hitting enemies with the chains from Royal Presence. The scaling is being doubled, going from 30 to 60 per level. Now the card might actually be worth running, at least as a filler. Next up we got Ceres, once again with two talent reworks. The first is Mortal Reach, now renamed to Forsake. The old talent allowed you to use Restore Soul while in Shadow Travel while increasing the duration of shadow travel by a second. The new talent makes Restore Soul heal over 0.5 seconds, but its cooldown is increased to 3 seconds. I can't believe it. They actually found a way to address the ranked community's issues with Ceres without making her super overpowered. This is going to be the go-to talent if you want to maximize your uptime when playing Ceres. Restore Soul still heals for the same amount, but now it does so super quickly allowing you to burst someone up and get back to shooting. The higher cooldown will aid in keeping the healing in check. I think ranked players might actually try some Ceres with this talent. That'll be interesting to see. Bravo balance team, you found a way to make Ceres viable without some wacky overpowered change. Oh, the new Agony. Damn it guys, you were so close. The talent replacing Agony is called Internal Torment. But don't worry, it will still bring Agony. The old talent allowed Restore Soul to ignore a portion of anti-healing, based on souls rendered. The new talent is as follows. Using Ren Soul on a target with max soul orb stacks marks them to take 20% increased damage for 3 seconds. Luminary Genos, Field Study Torval, Tyra Hunting Party, Yagaroth Piercing Quills, any of these ringing a bell? Once again I have to say it, damage boosting in Paladins is incredibly strong and this damage boost via Ren Soul is looking to be one of the strongest yet. Not only hosting a higher percent value, but also being activated during a stun. Which keep in mind, being CC'd turns off your Haven, further bolstering the strength of this talent. I don't think this talent will be the most played, at least not right away, solely due to healbot players taking the new Forsake talent. But, I do foresee this talent being a problem eventually. Much like Hunting Party Tyra, it might take the community some time to realize the strength this talent has. Hoping this one doesn't go through. Next is Seven. Grappling Hook now has one charge at base, 
and its cooldown has been lowered from 14 to 12 seconds. This is to accompany the grappling hook's capability to once again pull in enemies. To compensate, Overcharged is getting the Relentless Presence treatment, two charges with a longer cooldown. I've said it before, that I wanted the devs to find a way to make Seven's pull mechanic work, as in my opinion, it's the most unique aspect of the champion. Making the hook pull it base again brings that back. Additionally, reducing the charges on the ability will make Seven feel more in line with other flanks. On top of the hook changes, the explosive dodge is seeing a cooldown increase, going from 7 to 8 seconds. I guess they want to punish you more if you go for the hook and bomb combo. Personally, I feel that this is overkill. Seven tends to swing pretty violently in terms of meta viability, so I'm very interested to see where he sticks with these changes. Strix is up next with the same field of view change as Kinesa. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a rebalancing to his awful to fight against Sniper. So this is a pretty hefty buff and going to be mega frustrating to face. The dev comments do state that Strix will be revisited in the future, once they get Kinesa to a good spot. Interested to see where that goes. Next is my least favorite set of changes here. Nerfs to Terminus. Massacre Axe Damage is going down from 650 to 625. Why? It's the only pure melee weapon in the game on one of the slowest champions in the game. I'd at least be okay with this if they gave the axe a 20 unit range to match Makoa. Undying is also getting a nerf, with the damage reduction going from 20% to 15%. This one I can kind of understand since stacking DR on term via a train build can be kind of insane. But keep in mind to maximize this, Term has to commit to a melee-only playstyle, which hurts even more now that you deal less damage. Next up is Torvald. Gauntlet's damage is being lowered by a whopping 5 damage. At most, you need to commit an extra shot or two to kill a target now. This is such a nothing change. Another set of significant changes is for Tiberius. The old predatory instincts is in the base kit, meaning that bladed chakrams bounce 5 times, up from 3. Very nice quality of life. Crouching Tigron's windup has been lowered from 0.5 seconds to 0.2 seconds, which makes the ability feel so much better. Whirling Blade via the Blade Dance Ultimate now grants 0.2 seconds of invulnerability upon landing. Again, a nice quality of life buff here. I personally believe having the ult apply cauterize would be a better change. To accompany the base kit, we got two talent changes. First, a buff to Vicious Assault. Now you gain 40% damage reduction while airborne. This on top of the two charges, and slam damage. I already thought this talent was Tony's best, now it's even stronger. Watch out for Diving Tiberius next patch. Lastly, Predatory Instincts has been reworked. The old talent provided bonus chakram bounces. The new one reduces combat trance's cooldown by 25% when you earn a limbs during the ability. It sounds strong, but I still see this talent being Tibbs' overall worst. Combat Trance has a pretty hefty cooldown, and most times you'll only be killing one target. I do think this talent is leagues better than the old garbage though. Overall, I'm very pleased with Tiberius' set of changes. He fizzled out really quickly after release. Hopefully these changes will increase his viability and playtime. We should expect that for one of the starter champions in this game. Next is Vatu with a set of nothing changes. Kunai's damage is being up from 280 to 310, but the fire rate is being lowered from 0.9 seconds to 1 second. The DPS is still the same, so I don't see the point of this change. Also, the internal cooldown on enveloping shadows is being lowered from 3 seconds to 2 seconds. Once again, Vatu's other two talents have been ignored. Vora is seeing her ultimate being reverted to the release version. The move speed bonus is going from 60% to 75%. The targeting angle is going from 80 to 100, and the fire angle is going from 20 to 25. I know many detest it, but I feel that losing that hint of speed made Vora's ult lose a lot of impact, so I'm happy to see that back. The only change I don't like to the ult is this one here. Adjusted ultimate camera to aid with aiming and presentation. The new camera angle is zoomed out further, which does accomplish what the patch notes say, but the old camera angle really made you feel like a hunter stalking prey. It was put like that for a reason. Last up for balance, Willow's Blast Flower talent is seeing a nerf. Stacking damage is being lowered from 20% to 15%. Now capped out, the wand will deal 800 damage down from 900. Fair change. Willow gained a lot of strength via her new passive. 
Like Koga, I'm surprised she wasn't clobbered more due to community outcry. And that's the title surge patch notes. Overall, I'm mixed. Some changes I like, mainly to Caspian, Kinesa, and Tiberius, while others I despise, Cassie buffs and the item store in particular. I'm also very excited to see where the future of wave defense takes us. I would like to state that my Sims 3 Champions of the Realm video will be going up on July 24th, which is patch day. It's coming along great, and I think you guys are gonna love it. Anyways, what do you think of this patch? Love it? Hate it? Let me know down below. Don't forget to clap that like button and laser down that sub button. Snatching the bell is also a great way to stay in the loop. And as always, I'm Yellow Ninja, and peace.